So let's go to the editing tab. So in the editing tab, of course, we have our timeline down here. We have our, if we go up here, we have our inspector over here, which we can click on. And there's nothing to inspect because there's no clip. And the inspector is where we have or where we can control all parameters in a certain clip. And then again, we have a metadata tab, which I very seldom use because I don't have time to write a lot of metadata. But if a clip has some metadata, we can go in and check it out here. And then we have a mixer as well. If we need, and you'll see, it'll just appear down here uh, and we can toggle it on and off as you want. Just a mixer. Then we have a sound library. I have a library already, but uh, you can add a new sound library pretty easy by, by clicking here and add a library. We're not going to use uh, time on that in this video. I think I did a video about that a while ago, so you have to check that out up in the top corner. Okay, uh, then we also have like an editing index. We have not edited anything, so we don't use that. And then we have our um, effects library. And in our effects library, we have all sorts of things. We have uh, in our toolbox, we have uh, all the transitions you would want to use in a project. We have uh, audio transitions, we have titles. We even have some fusion titles, which are uh, templates that you can edit in and use in your projects. And um, we'll look at that later, I think. And then we have uh, generators uh, where we can use uh, solid colors. I use solid colors a lot, so that's good. Then we have some open effects, which is um, resolve effects. It can be like um, glows and film grain and uh, different stuff. Just to be aware that in the um, the free version of DaVinci Resolve, some of these things are blocked out. You'll have a watermark on some of the effects if you choose to use them. But really, you don't need to use all these effects to make great videos in Resolve anyways. So just keep that in mind. And we also have a lot of filters um, and Resolve effects. There is a lot. And also some audio effects and some Fairlight effects. So that is... Uh, the basic run of all the buttons. One thing here, if you look at, click on this icon here, you can minimize how much of your screen it actually are using. Uh, I prefer to have it like this, so I always have my timeline uh, free. So that's, and then uh, if you're done in a in a, one of the tabs, you could just click it and go away. You can also go over here to the right and click here if you only want to work with one monitor screen. I prefer working with two. So I'll do that. So let's go to the media pool and let's just drag this a bit down. Here I have my window where I see my timeline and here I have my viewer where I see the clip. If I am viewing a clip, for instance, this one, I will view it here, something like that. Okay, so let's, um, let's just get started with this. So the first thing to start out in DaVinci Resolve, actually, it's a great idea to start it even before you import any media into, into Resolve, but I didn't do that, so, but I think it'll be just fine. Okay, so um, first thing to do is to go, whenever you, you start a project or start editing a project, you have to go to File, and then you go down to Project Settings. And, also, and here we have our project settings for our project. So one thing to keep in mind with the timeline is that as you see now, my timeline uh, frames per second. You have to, you have to know what kind of a timeline or how many frames per second you want in your project to make this work. So I did import everything in uh, before doing that. It's not really a big problem because all my footage is 24 frames a second. If you're doing things in 30, you should change it to 30 here. As you see, as soon as I drop in any footage in DaVinci which is 24, it will just lock the project to 24 frames a second. So just keep that in mind. You can't change that unless you do it from the beginning. Um, and then, you, you know, this is all the, the settings for the timeline resolution. I think most of this is fine. You shouldn't, I, I don't mess too much around with this. 
There is a function in DaVinci Resolve. If your media or you have trouble by running your media smoothly, you can actually optimize your media. And, um, and, and actually in here, you can also choose what media resolution or what it should be. So I have some mindset to this. I think that is pretty high. So maybe I should change it to, to a DNX H, H S Q and also do the same here. So you don't have to um, worry too much about that. And then of course you have like a catch clip folder and whatnot. And mine is set to the video galleries and that's just fine. I'll just hit save. So that's one little thing. Uh, the second thing you need to do before you start editing is you need to go up here in the resolve tab and go to preferences. And in the preferences, you need to go to user and in user, you need to go to project save and load. I have already turned this on, but when you start a new um, start up a new database, it will look like this. So it's super important that you go in and push live save and save project back backups. And then you can change how often you want to do a backup of your project. Um, and uh, you know, if you want to do a backup, you know, every hour daily, whatever just remember to do this this is super important and i'll just save that okay so 